J.C. Ryle, that great biblical expositor of years gone by, said, I'm more convinced as I grow older that to keep our eyes fixed on the second coming of Christ is the secret of Christian peace. Now, I want to tell you, I, I agree with that. We are longing for Jesus to intercede in our lives. We want Jesus to come in into our world and straighten all this mess out. I don't, I, it matters not to me whether you're a Democrat or Republican. If you're a sane human being, whether you're a fascist or a Marxist or a communist, it make, makes no difference. Or maybe you're a capitalist. It makes no difference to me who you are. You will have to say, you will have to say, this world is at a mess. And only Jesus Christ, the Son of God, can straighten it out. And in like measure, for many of us, our lives are in a mess. We have churches that are going off the rails. We've got children that are going in 10,000 different directions. We've got grandchildren that are going off the, off the skids. We've, we've got parents. It just goes on and on and on and on. There's so much confusion. But I open up the Bible today and I say, well, where, where can I get some, some kind of peace and joy? I'm not here trying to tell you uh, something that's going to get you to give me a bunch of money. I'm here to tell you the word of God is faithful and true. And the Bible says in Mark chapter 10, Jesus said, for the son of man, that's Jesus Christ, came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now, when I hear that, I'm speechless because you, you need to know something. I love Jesus and I believe you love Jesus. And in the, these days of my life, and I'm fortunate enough that I've been a pastor and I've been able to be consumed by Jesus. And I know that Jesus has prepared a home for me. And I know that Jesus is preparing a home for you. And I know that Jesus died for me. And I know that Jesus died for you. And I know that Jesus took my shame. And I know Jesus is a message for us uh, by the word of God in Mark. And I know that uh, he has a, a pastoral heart. And Peter, when he told Mark, who Mark had a pastoral heart, they had a pastoral heart. They have a heart of a shepherd. They, they love Jesus and they love the people around them. And looking down through the ages, they saw you and me and they, they loved us also. So Jesus is identifying with us today. He is identifying with the broken. He's identifying with the disenfranchised. I hear all this, all this stuff going on around us about how Jesus has, has disqualified people. And, and people tell me that the, Jesus disqualified me, but that's not true. That's not how God is. It is not per, performance-based love. It is grace, pure and simple. So Jesus says right now, I have a heart in, in, in Mark chapter 10. I have a heart, not only for these little ones, the most insignificant people in the world. I have a heart for them. I have a heart for unborn babies, the most unseen people in the world. I have a heart for, I have a heart for divorced people. I cannot imagine the, the pain and the sadness and the sorrow that you've had to go through. I, I, I have a heart for, I, I love homosexuals. I, I love transgenders. Uh, God loves us all. And I, I don't know about you, but I am so sick and tired of trying to keep up with who is in the kingdom of God and who's not in the kingdom of God. Because to be quite honest with you, I don't know. All I know is that Jesus Christ loves us all. And he came to serve and sacrifice for every one of us today. And I know people hate Jesus. Even today, people hate Jesus. And the result, they hate you and me. And they have standards that they're not able to live up to. But Jesus says, I came not to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. Folks, you, you can't have eternal life without Jesus. You can't have eternal peace and eternal joy without Jesus. Oh, you can get excited for a minute, but that's not the peace and the forgiveness 
the power that Jesus brings. So today, as we look at all of this, and we think of all of this, maybe this ought to be a time of reflection for you and me, where we just bow our heads and close our eyes or get on our knees or, or do like me sometimes. I just get on my face before God because I, I'm so, so uh, just nothing before God. I want to just get as low as I can to, in submission to him and just say, thank you, God, for loving me because I know many times I am not lovable and I do not deserve it. But thank you for loving me. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for living in my heart, calling me to preach and giving me this opportunity to talk to you and for you to be my friend. And I'm your friend. And Jesus is both our friends. Thank you so much for being with us today. And I do from the bottom of my heart, you make my life real and you give me a reason to get up in the morning. Thank you for being here and pray for us and we want to pray for you. Thank you. God bless you.